Anybody in the audience would like to address us today on an uh, agenda item? Go forward and state your name, please. Hi, I'm Eric Brokaw from the um, I wanted to comment about the bidding process, in particular uh, WM12-03-26. Uh, this is one of many times we've done uh, bids, um, sent out a lot of them. Very few come back, then they getting disqualified. I think the county really should look a little bit more at how the procedure is done. Because if we're having so many people disqualified, a lot of people are misunderstanding. And the job is communication so that uh, the people bidding can actually know that our job is to do the best, to see the best bids possible. And if they're not understanding the bids right to do it right, there's an issue. I mean, we might write everything technically, but we have to write it so that the normal person can understand it. I would suggest the commission just take a look at that. I think this is at least the second time in a week or two that I've seen it where a lot of them have been disqualified for various reasons. Then they may have legitimately been disqualified, but I think there's a communication issue that the board should look at. Thank you, Eric. Anybody else? Moving on to items for consideration. WM12 slash 03 24. Administration approve the council payable. So moved. Second. Moved second. Great job. Questions, comments? Really good job. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 All opposed, say no. Motion carries. WM 12 slash 3 dash 25. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Questions? Mr. Karaszinski. Um, just the middle part of that. Um, the. Um, Water basin drain pump aggregate. Is that a ten thousand dollar estimate? I can't be doing that. I didn't know John if you were familiar with this one. Uh, John Warner Public Works. I'm not a hundred percent familiar with this one because facilities and uh, Craig has been dealing with it directly with um, the juvenile detention. Um, I don't think it's a super expensive one because it's not a really large area to be taken care of. I can't give you an exact dollar amount, but it's not super expensive. I think what what they had in the motion uh, up here where it says the excess from the generator will, will cover these costs, I do believe that to be true. Okay, that was where I was getting. Okay, okay thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Having driven by the Google Transition Center yesterday, uh, that's a pretty good mud puddle or pool that they have in front of the parking lot. Yeah, you mean Lake Wishka? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. True. Yeah. Attempted to fix it once before, which is a kill. It just appeared when I saw it last spring. <laughs> Any other comments? All in favor say yes. 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 All opposed say no. Motion carries. 
WM 12 dash or slash 03 dash 26 public works board of heritage landing advanced lighting technology demonstration retrofit project to strain electric so moved second moved and seconded mr jagger on this can i ask why we're not going with the global tech on the kind of light in there uh yeah when we looked we we took the bids and they were they needed to give us information on the wattages of the lights and the size and that type of thing. And we had in there what the cost per kilowatt hour was for electricity. When you crunched all the numbers, the global tech did not come out to be the cheapest option when you look at the entire seventy thousand hour life of the bulb. The cost of installation plus operations over its life. So when they have the thirty eight thousand and two seventy eight is that a year's worth of power or is that going to be a that that is the cost of the bulbs plus the installation as read at the bid opening that is not the true cost to the county if you look at the next page that's where you see the true cost um, and you can see that the global tech um, strain electric had an option with global tech and corby energy had an option with global tech and when you follow those all the way across to the far right hand column you'll see that those that with the global tech they did not um, compete with the lumicon product uh, in total installation materials and energy cost over the life of the product well, <coughs> well see i was just taking it thirty six thousand for this one the other one's thirty eight thousand I mean, for your model electrical consumer right so it seems like it's still like eight thousand. I mean, I was wondering if that's a year. Right? No, the, what we have here on the on this, um, page ten of your agenda is the total cost installation plus you know, the cost of materials plus the cost of installation plus the cost of operation over their seventy thousand hour rated life. So that's one of the fifty three thousand. Right. Right. And that is how we told the contractors in the bid that we were going to be evaluating the bids. So there was no secret there that we were going to crunch those numbers out and come up with that total cost. Um, to Eric's point, is there a reason we got to know qualified? Was there a lack of insurance or was it an order? Or don't have Very briefly, the lowest bidder, um, I can go through here. Uh, let's see. Conti Corporation was the low red bid. They stated right in their bid it could not meet our schedule. This being a grant, we have fixed dates that we have to have things done by. They stated right in there that they couldn't meet our schedule. They couldn't even get the light bulbs here by the time we had to have them installed and operational. Therefore, we could not use them. Uh, J.R. Howell, who was, had the next lowest cost up front, they did not disclose some information to us that they should have in the bid and we decided that the corporate council's um, backup that that we couldn't accept that one and then the next bidder erickson electric did not fill up the bid correctly we couldn't even understand what numbers they provided us because they didn't put the they put dollar numbers in the line that was supposed to be the watts of the light bulb but we just really had no idea what they were even telling us so any numbers that they provided were basically useless so then we come to the next bidder which was strain electric and their option with the lumicon was the least expensive option for us thank you you're welcome mr Skolnick. um a couple of questions what is 70,000 hours represents how many years? Several years. The, let's see, the bulbs are on something like 2,500 hours a year. So, yeah, I mean, that's like 30 years or something. I think it, it's 15. 15 years? 15 years, give or take, when you think yeah. of a 12 hour day. Yeah, 12, yeah, about half the hours in a year. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's a good long number of years. And then just one last question. I, if I remember, are we repl we're not replacing the poles, or we are? No, we're not replacing the, the poles fixtures. or the fixtures. Not even not the fixtures. Even. Just what's inside the fixtures. Okay, so there's no anything left over that's worth it. No. You won't really notice much of a difference, if any, on the looks of the 
lights out there until they're turned on, whereas right now you have a high pressure sodium bulb which gives off a very pinkish orange light and these new bulbs will give off a very white light, similar to this color that these bulbs are. Mr. Plummer? John, I'm just curious, if Lubicon happens to be the best bulb out there that provides the longest service at the cheapest price, why didn't you put that in the specs if that's all they can bid? Because there's quite a few different products out there and they all offer different options yeah, we didn't want to limit it. But according to this, you knew that that would be the cheapest. I mean, you did the figures. They didn't provide them, correct? No, they gave us the information on their product, and we just cranked it through the equation to see how it all worked out. We, we told them what the electricity cost, and they told us how many watts their bulb would take. What we told them was the temperature range that we wanted it in. We wanted your bulb somewhere between 4,100 and 4,900 Kelvin degrees color. So they had to be in that range. And they told us how many watts their light bulbs would be. And we cranked out the math with the cost of power to see what it would cost us over the life of the bulb to operate. Oh, so that was up to them to figure out which would be the cheapest yeah. bulb to propose. Right. OK, that's right. I just want to know that we didn't have any. No, we just okay. we compared apples to apples all the way down the line. They just told us what product they were proposing to use. Yeah. yeah. I'm just looking at what Blasco did. They must not have looked at the Lumicon to you know, figure it was cheaper. So yeah, well, I think we didn't demand it, anything. It's all no, I'm getting. At. I think a lot of it depends on who their their typical suppliers that they work with are, and what products their their normal suppliers would offer them. And all this is is it's kind of like when they sell you a car, so it's going to get 40 miles to a gallon. We'll be lucky if it meets these expectations, correct? I don't know. I I suspect these lights will meet. This, there's enough information out there. We did a lot of research on this, and uh, it appears that that these have been researched enough that uh, they do meet the um, stated criteria. Well, I'm sure they'll say, but you know, it just we'll find out when we're installed. Thank you. <laughs> God, not that this is going to affect. It's a good time. <laughs> this will affect how I think anybody votes. But are these things made in this country? I'm just curious. Yes, as a matter of fact, they are. Anyone else? Thank you, John. Go. No. All in favor of the motion say yes. 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 All opposed say no. Motion carries. WM12 slash 03 dash 27 from Public Works. Support so Second. Movement supported. Questions, comments? Mr. Jagger. I can't wait to know exactly what these are going to do. Leslie Rose, Sustainability Coordinator for Department of Public Works. Um, this, this project is one that I applied for from the DEQ um, almost a year ago. Um, and it's basically, the goal is to really define and establish a, a baseline for the county so that we have energy data, um, water, waste, fuel consumption in one accessible place to help us inform strategies for the county, long-term, mid-term, long-term, short-term, mid-term, and long-term strategies. Um, the other thing that I've been finding is that a lot of grants, or a few grants that I've, I've seen um, recently require a locally adapted sustainability plan to apply. So I think this is going to help us really strategically, um, not only you know, from an operational standpoint, but to tee up for other opportunities. The pinpoint like areas where we need more kind of energy and yeah. should be and things like yeah. that. To have qualitative and quantitative data to help, to help establish um, priorities for the county and um, you know also to help strengthen that see my position um, to have a lot of data in one place will be really helpful um, and hope, you know, hopefully for all of the departments as well. Mr. Plummer. The end kind. Uh, how is that based and how did they know it would be seventeen hundred dollars of our in kind? I'm just I'm just curious on what is that gonna involve with that's in kind from from the consultant. Um, it was specified in the RFP that this grant the maximum amount is seventeen thousand dollars for this project. So they based their proposal and they built in their charge out based on, on that number. 
So all the all the respondents knew that that's you know, it's public public information that that's the maximum amount that this that this grant project will will cover. So they wrote in kind in, they didn't have to, but oh, okay. they did. Another comment? Thank you. Uh, in favor of the motion, say yes. 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 Oh, please. Oh, opposed, say no. Motion carries. Old business. Mr. Garazinski. This is a question I had for our sustainability coordinator. How much stuff are we accumulating with this renovation? Are we getting plans to, I know we were running storage. Uh, is it disappearing? I mean, <laughs> I mean, that's not very important. Yeah. We, we started to implement where if, if a department has something, and I'll just kind of try to summarize where we are with this. I don't um, want to put you on No, spot. it's okay. If, if, if the department has trailers. something, yes, I know, I've been in them. Um, if, if a department has something that they no longer can use, um, you know, we're, we're working on a system to offer it up to other departments and we've had some success where you know the airport's been able to do some old filing cabinets from the health department and, and things like that you know going forward um you know i think that we're going to be meeting with some local auctioneers to talk about how we can better manage these things so it's definitely on on the radar could they be made available to maybe some of the other units of government before we auction it at <laughs> At no cost. I mean, auctioning isn't cheap sometimes. Just, just a thought. Yeah. That with the generator issue that came up with the generator issue, and um, that's something that um, we'll be looking at. There's currently a business model that's being used through the county where the businesses are looking at using, um, and Leslie's been involved in that, um, looking at using, um, utilizing surplus property. And uh, so we're going to explore that um, municipal with the municipalities and the county as well, because there's so much stuff. You're right, there's so much stuff. But we do need to put a process in place that if it's not going to be in use, we don't store it. That we just keep moving it so that we don't end up with trailers full of um, stuff that we don't frequently look at anyhow. A couple of weeks ago, I had the opportunity to go through the in Lansing the federal government surplus place. I still have a card from the school, so I dropped in to see what was available. And if all municipalities, if we had a place where we could, almost a consignment, and sell it to the public. I, I don't know. I just hate to see storage. You know, I have four daughters. You know what stuff I got in my house? <laughs> But anyways, and then I hope I didn't put you on no, the spot. No, I recognize it's, it's definitely um, um, on the radar. So. Okay, thank you. Any other old business? Is there any new business? Well, considering the news from yesterday about the helicopter possibly being uh, leaving the county, uh, I would recommend, you know, I can either do that personally as a letter, but I think a board resolution urging that money be put back in the federal government for the helicopter at the airport. I would support that. Not just because of the revenue that's generated, but because it's a safety issue uh, as far as the Great Lakes are concerned. Exactly. That's been moved and supported. Any comments? All in favor? Aye, aye, yes. Aye, aye. Aye, aye. Aye, aye. Any other new business? See, now let's move to the audience for public comment on a new topic. Anybody in the audience like to address the board on a new topic? Please come forward. See, now not entertain a motion to adjourn. All those moved. You adjourn. All in favor? Aye. aye. Adjourn. Thank you. You don't bring up very much film in this, do you? Well, since we don't use film anymore, we have more folks in Rochester, New York. <laughs> <laughs>
No, but what it does uh, allow me when it's a short video is uh, the uploading times are not so onerous. I get to use my computer a little more often. Because when you do upload it, uh, well, it, it does, uh, it does take a lot of uh, power. Uh, thankfully, I actually have a dedicated computer just for uploading. But sometimes, like uh, last week, 